Okay, another um, t-shirt idea happened accidentally by Miss Liz. It's Nerd Sestuous. That needs to be on a t-shirt. <laughs> Alright, someone making a list? We need a whole list. I'm oh, writing yeah. it down. I, I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Ronnie oh, has a notebook. On. It's all yeah. good. Oh, I am sure this is being recorded. <laughs> that too. Yeah. That too. It's going to go out there into the inter interweb world. Yeah, there's records. I don't think they're ready for it, but it's going out there. <laughs> That's why it needs to happen. Yes. <laughs> All the yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jamie Jams. Do yeah. you wanna... Sorry, Rich just handed me a package that I got in the mail randomly. I got a four pack of Red Bull and I'm not sure what that's all about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Yay? <laughs> Apparently you need four pairs of wings? Is it a is it a Valentine's gift? It, it it's says a it says claim fulfillment on it. I'm not sure what that's all about. Oh. Huh. Okay, I well, thank you. you thank you, Red Bull. And this segment is now sponsored by Red Bull. Red Bull, give me <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll cut that part out. <laughs> he just left the room. He will probably be back in a minute. Okay, when he comes back, tell him he needs to do his yep. cameo, like he usually does. <laughs> okay. Yeah, his cameo. He's feeding the cat. Liz, Rich, Rich is, uh, is Jamie's uh, other half who sometimes makes an appearance, but just his voice, which is yeah. sometimes really creepy. Sometimes he'll poke his head in from the side, yeah. and then he disappears. Yeah. <laughs> That's lovely. <laughs> we call him the, the male floating head. Ooh. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. So perhaps he'll make an appearance later. Perhaps. But, um, go, <laughs> go ahead, Jim. Okay. <clears throat> um, if you could vacation in any fantasy literary, television, or film realm, where would you go? Hmm, oh gosh, this is a tough one. Uh, never mind, it's not tough, Narnia. <laughs> I picked that one, too. <laughs> Look, I actually have a a giant wardrobe. Oh, that is, oh. Yeah. Okay. very nice. I I check all the time just to make sure. I'm like, <laughs> you gotta. Is the magic working today? <laughs> you know what? I tell you what. If Mr. Tumnus is is uh, McAvoy, mm -hmm. um, I'm never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bother sending search and rescue. No, it's not even no. worth it. I'll be with Mr. Thomas. <laughs> also, if Prince in there, forget it. Like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> He's dreamy. I, uh, for Narnia Christmas, I was Susan. Because I, oh. I used to work at a bridal store uh, in New York, Kleinfeld, which was um, the show, the Say Yes to the Dress show. Oh, my God. <laughs> I used to watch on that show. <laughs> Yeah. I worked there for four and a half years, so if you watch yeah. season one and two, I'm like in the background of some of those episodes. Um, okay, now I have to rewatch all the episodes <laughs> on YouTube. This is like, where's Liz? It's the Where's Waldo, but where's Liz? <laughs> yeah. There are two specific episodes where I'm like in the episode, but then, so my, my mom and dad, my dad, um, they would tape the episodes and like go like frame by frame and be like, that's our foot! Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, your parents are adorable. They're adorable. Yeah, I was like, you know, you can just like wait till Christmas and see the real life. It's like not that cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so well, that merits for something. Yeah. So so when I worked there, they would sell all of the old headpieces that never sold. For, they'd give them to us either free or for like a buck or whatever. So I have this like amazing like a thousand dollar like crown that I use like, and like crazy. So that's my like Susan crown. Very nice. Yeah. So Narnia for sure. It's the best. Cool. Okay. What would you title your autobiography? Oh, well, since I'm working on it, it's going to be called, and this is why I'm single. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and that Number one a lot. bestseller on the New York Times <laughs> list for probably 10 years, I'm going to say. Yeah, or like 30 minutes, probably, actually. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come to the book signing. It's all good. Yeah, we'll, we'll, bring, we'll bring friends. 
<laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah. So that's Let's crash the party. That's my working title, and this is why I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, if you were gifted with your own personal TARDIS, what point in time would you travel to first? Wait, do I get one? <laughs> <laughs> we're just still waiting for hours. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I have two time periods I would go to. Number one, I would go back to the Civil War because it's one of my favorite time periods. Um, and the second, I would go to the 1950s through 60s and 70s because, and similarly, my other favorite time period because um, all of the changes that happened in those. I'm also a big history nerd. I love history. My dad used to tell me stories of World War One and Two and the Civil War when I was a kid, and I'd have to memorize dates and like that was my bedtime stories. It's like, oh, the battle, the Getty, battle of Gettysburg. Like, cool, Dad. That's a great bedtime story. Now I'm gonna have my air, nightmares. Um, but I would, I love, um, I love like the fifties and sixties and all like the civil rights movement and like all of the crazy changes that America went through at those times. Um, and how, how relevant they still are today is amazing to me. Um, I am enamored with Martin Luther King. Like I went to a vigil on Martin Luther King day here that was like amazing. And just to see those things happen, the assassinations that were going on regularly, like you don't see that. Uh, you just don't see some of those things today. The the unrest that happens today is very like um, weird because it's a it's sort of like repressed and yet it's not. So it's sort of funny because it it just like seeped out of people at that time period and it was just, you know women's life and all of that was going on and I'm so enamored with it. I just wish I could be there. Plus I have a giant crush on Robert Kennedy. I love him. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I need to send you, there's something that I, that I need to send you um, to the, someone, I don't remember if it was BuzzFeed or if it was Refinery, somebody did a list of the hottest presidents. Ooh. I need to send you that. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 like, run. they go like way back, and I forget, a friend of mine shared it on Facebook, and um, she like, she listed a particular president and then it was like one of the obscure ones that no one talks about anymore. It's like, hey now, blah, blah, blah. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> but I think the link, I'll, I'll send that to you. <laughs> like the Kennedy era is my favorite era because the Kennedys are the friggin' worst. Like they're terrible. They were terrible people. And we like put them on a pedestal and I just, I love reading their biographies. I have I literally have like 17 by <laughs> of Robert and JFK. Um, I'm so enamored with them. So to go to live in that time period, I would go there in a heartbeat. That's awesome. Yeah. And the fashion. Oh. Oh. God. Mm. Like a little skirt. Like yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. This is one of our favorite questions to ask people. What is your favorite made-up word? Ooh, um, like, did I make it up, or did, like, other people make it up? Either way. Either way. Yeah. Hmm. Well, all words start off made up, first way. Um, <laughs> but I really like the word shenanigans, which I know is now a word, but it had to not have been a word at some point. Shenanigans is, like, my go-to, like, lifestyle word. That I like, I am a shenanigan, so I feel like <laughs> that's like my life's goal is to have shenanigans always. Um, I entered a word contest. I wish I could remember this word I made up. I made up this word and I entered it in a contest because, you know, like, why not? Um, <laughs> it was like a day and I was at work and I was like, well, I don't have anything to do. I'll enter a word contest. And I spent literally like two hours coming up with this word. Now I can't even remember it. Um, clearly, that's not my favorite one. But. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I would say shenanigans. I can't think of another word that I would that's like sort of made up sounding that I just love. There's a few like usually when we ask people, um, some folks have said um, sinceriously. Oh, um, that's From Shalessence was said a couple of yep. times. That well. Farrell said on SNL. Ooh, impulse simple is a good one. Barney Stinson word. Barney! <laughs> yes. Yeah. Impulse simple, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, nope. That's a good question. Um, given the choice of anyone in the nerd community, real or fictional, who would you want to have a drink with? In the nerd community. Well, um, I think Felicia Day for sure. Like, I have the biggest nerd crush on her. Oh, yes. She is. Um, if you guys haven't read her autobiography, you have to read it. It's wonderful. Um, I think she is, at the same time, um, like, she pushes boundaries and is, is sort of groundbreaking. She's also very reserved and questions everything she does as she does it which you don't really see when you watch her stuff. You think, like, oh, my God, she's, like, a warrior princess wrapped in, like, a fairy pixie's body. Like, obviously, she's so self-centered. And, I mean, um, self-assured, and she knows who she is. But you read her biography, and you realize, like, oh, like, she's got insecurities, too. She's, like, a normal human person. And I don't think you get that from, you know, a lot of big celebrities sort of become paragons, and there's not a lot of real to them anymore because they become sort of the name instead of the reality um and I feel like she is so cool and I just would love like I would just love to be like her and also Mindy Kaling I don't know if she counts as in the nerd community I feel like she's a nerd herself so yeah I, she mm -hmm. totally she's is. totally a nerd oh yeah like, I love her I would love to be she she's my spirit animal 100% um like her and Jess from New Girl, like Zoe Deschanel. Sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. They make that is who I am as the two of them together. <laughs> Another crazy pairing. Um, Weird Al, Taylor Swift, Mindy Kaling, and Zoe Deschanel. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's 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 a personalized T-shirt for yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those four people. <laughs> I like um, it. So the two of them, um, I I just love them. And then Zach, because I I love Zach. I think he's like the coolest person um, in the world. I think that the way that he lives out his faith and the way that he lives out um, how he feels about nerd culture and wanting to connect to people is also groundbreaking because not a lot of, especially, it's funny because in this day and age with technology, it's so, it's so much easier to connect to people, yet I feel like people create more barriers even though it's easier um and he sort of takes great pains to break those down and say like i am one of you i am you know a nerdy people and i am just as nerdy if not nerdier than you are so i i love that about him. he's the unicorn the ultimate unicorn <laughs> yeah. i'd probably be like drooling the whole time so it probably wouldn't go over well i'd do better to have a drink with the girls than to have a drink Hello, I don't know what to do. Like, is this normal to do with your hands when boys are present? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you're the unicorn. <laughs> uh, don't look at me. Speaking of Felicia Day, when I first saw her for the first time in like real life person, I'm like, oh my god, Tinkerbell is real. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Pixie. But that was like my first reaction because, yeah. like, she was like, she was in one place one minute and then she was in another place the next, and I was like, how did you? She's a fairy. <laughs> like that was my only explanation my brain could come up with. Yep, I love that. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, let's see, I got a couple more. Um, when did you last sing to yourself, and what song did you choose? Um probably right before we started this podcast. <laughs> um, I I am always singing to myself as I'm a singer. So as a singer, I'm constantly like, constantly just singing. Actually, when I when I worked at Kleinfeld, I used to like walk around the store singing to myself and people would be like, do you hear that you're doing it? And I'm like, no, oh, sorry, could you hear me? <laughs> um, right now I have been singing Hamilton because I'm freaking out. <gasps> Oh my god i am like obsessed with it and i sort of like really want to become like a rap artist because i feel like i'm really good at it <laughs> <laughs> i heart lin manuel you have no idea how much i love that man like actually not gonna lie i was like just looking through instagram real quick and i came across that 
I don't know if you can see it. It's oh. it. <laughs> Yeah, because Hamilton won the Grammy last night, and I was just like, no. I watched the Grammys just for Hamilton. I made my parents nice. Grammy. Oh, I miss, Apparently, I miss there the was Grammys. a spike. There was a spike in Google searches for who is Hamilton. Yes, <laughs> <what> an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It was impossible to get those tickets. Now it's even going to be even more so. I know. Ah. Yeah. Uh, the oh, devastation oh. of my life. It, it better go on tour. That's all I've got to say. And it says, new rule. Always wrap your acceptance speech. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's going on tour in 2017. The dates for San Francisco, um, Chicago, and L.A. are... I know there's more than that, but I know that those dates are set. Um, but I think it's already... I don't think the tickets are on sale, but I'm sure as soon as they go on sale, it's going to be like San Diego yeah. Comic Con. Like, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm going to rip your eyes out. I'm getting those tickets. <laughs> Seriously. Like, the, yeah. excuse me. I've been standing in line for the past six hours. Move your butt to the back. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm at the point where I want to legit save up $400 and just buy a ticket boot. Like, I don't care how I get there. I need to go. <laughs> it's like Mecca for my heart right now. Um, like, I have to go. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hamilton and um, Something Rotten. Those are the two on the top of my yes, list. Yes, I want to see Something Rotten. Because yeah. Christian Borle is my, my Broadway crush. Oh, big time. Um, he's wonderful. But uh, actually, um, Michael Esper is my Broadway crush. He was in... Ah. Oh, my God. Do you know Michael Esper? My good choice. Good choice. Uh, um, if you have never heard The Last Ship, which is Sting's Broadway show, which isn't on anymore, but it, the music is hauntingly beautiful, um, listen to it because it's gorgeous. So he's in that one, and it, I love him. Um, but, yeah, definitely Hamilton. Like, I like how does a bastard orphan, son of a whore and a statesman, dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by providence, impoverished and squalor, grow up to be a hero and a scholar, the ten dollar founding father without a father, got a lot farther by working a lot harder, by being a lot smarter, by being a self-starter by fourteen, they placed him in charge of a trading charter, like, come on, I can't even! It's and like drop <laughs> music, <laughs> sign <laughs> on up, bye. That's it. That's all I got. Boom. I'm officially marrying Liz. I don't care what. Divorce and dance, right? Never <laughs> been. <laughs> we have to take. We have to take Lynn Manuel in this. Like when we send the link out to people, this yeah, is no, this is happening. Yes. This is happening. We're gonna have to. Oh my god. Can we clip that? Just that part as a yeah, video we'll of some kind? Clip that part and send I can't even do that. <laughs> I, uh, that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I've been spending the past two weeks listening to it in my car and like rewind. Not that, not only that one, my shot, I can do my shot too, which is like legit. Um, and with the like fast ones, it's the David Diggs ones that like really trip me up, but I'm trying to get those too because he is super fast. He's like a sick crazy rapper so i'm trying to get those two but i've just been like rewinding it and if i mess up i'll go back again and like that's just me in my car i'm like oh, we have to learn this because why what <laughs> does you have to are we on why not for some <laughs> like, the i've taken to learning these lyrics you think it was like i'm getting paid or it's my job or something like <laughs> it's not it's not my job I literally have like three other jobs, but this is my new job. It's the long <laughs> All 48 tracks, I'm gonna know them all. <laughs> That's awesome. You know what? I would I would pay to watch. I would pay to watch um, Liz commentary commentating on like bootleg Broadway shows <laughs> and just her commentary. <laughs> it's just like playing. I, I think that would be the best thing ever. It would really just, would watch especially if it was like. Like, Phantom of the Opera is my favorite show of all time. If It would just be me singing along and people being like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> Be quiet. I'm talking during the show. I'm like, I'm not talking. I'm singing. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds beautiful. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jams, I did God. see a pillow shifting. Yeah, yes, uh, say hi to Liz Taylor, floating male head. Hello, floating male head. Hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. 
man. How exciting. <laughs> Are you like nearly headless Nick? Like, is it sort of like that kind of like <laughs> you like pop it off when you want? I don't. I don't know. <laughs> so intrigued. <laughs> Where did he go? <laughs> oh, I think his ears are turning red. <laughs> this is what I do. I scare boys. Oh. That's all I do. No, I'm just gonna. I, I just come in with the hay and then leave. That's that, that's my stick. It's true. <laughs> the manly hay. Richard, Richard, you fail. You didn't even do the right hay. Hey. <laughs> hey. There you go. Slightly less manly, but still fun. <laughs> Oh my. Oh my goodness. That was too good. Uh, and on that note. <laughs> okay, another question. <laughs> um, let me see. Um, if you could wake up tomorrow having gained one ab quality or ability, what would you choose? Um, are we talking like superhero abilities or like real life traits that I lack? Whatever you want. Um, okay. <laughs> I would really like to be better at financial uh, management, first, like, real life, great, that would be great. Um, Sign me up. <laughs> like, how do people do it? I don't even know. Like, I just, I can't manage my money to save my life. So there's, that's, like, personal, uh, you know, sharing with you. But um, as far as, like, superhero traits go, I, I always say I'd love to fly, except for I really don't like heights, so I, I think that's not true. Total not true thing. I think just I think you just say like oh I like to fly, but like no, it, it's scary. I don't <laughs> want to fly. I don't want to walk. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd like super speed. I think that would be really cool to have uh, super speed or to be able to time travel. That would be good. nice. Good choices. Good choices. Oh, yeah. Probably in a blue box. Oh. Or no, I know what it is. I would like to be able to quantum leap into other time versions of my own body and see, like, what other Liz's are doing and other, like, you know, when, like, the timeline is shifted and there's, like, another Liz out there. I want to know what that girl does. Oh, my head just exploded. <laughs> I have no idea what just happened. That <laughs> is the best answer. We that have so deep. <laughs> like, it's like the musical If Then, essentially. Which is about... Oh my gosh. So that musical, whatever, there's a verb about that musical about a girl named Liz who is known as Liz in the city and Beth at home. My parents call me Beth. I was raised Beth. I changed it when I moved to the city. And her feelings for a boy named Josh. Uh oh. Uh oh. And <laughs> I'm telling you, it's like if then. It yeah, totally my is. Of the of the description, and he sent it to me, and he says, "Is this a musical about you?" <laughs> like, Maybe it is. Yeah, you never no. know. It's Adina Menzel is portraying you. Hey, oh, I think I forgot about the highlights. Well, yeah, I got a lot going on. Yeah, you know. he's like pink and teal and stuff, so I might go back to that. Um, but yeah, I would do that because I am. I I actually want to write a book about quantum events because I think it's very fascinating. Um, where, like, you can sort of, like, trade places with your other alternate people because they're probably doing, like, other crazy things. Like Vampire Willow from Buffy. Like, she was a vampire. So, like, you know. Yeah. What, what's other Liz up to? I gotta know. I like this. <laughs> I, I, I do. I love this idea. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Stephen Hawking would... Oh, oh, can I change my nerd drink? At, can I add one? I would yeah. have a drink. Stephen Hawking. I am obsessed with Stephen Hawking. I'd be way too intimidated. <laughs> He's just so like. He's so I feel like I don't know what to say to you. You're so smart. I know what I do. What? I'll just be like, yeah, my cousin over there. She would like to meet you. Back there, she's a little too shy. That's what I would do. Cause I've done that before. <laughs> like, 
he's so cool. Like, um, the fact that he only has, like, these tiny muscles in his cheek left that work, and that's how he communicates with people, and he can't even speak anymore. Like, like people would give up, and he never gave up. Like, that's fascinating. Mm-hmm. I think that he's amazing. Anyway, and, and, that he, and then we can figure out this whole quantum of it situation and how I can get to those other Liz's, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Yeah. He'd be like, I'm, I can figure this out for you, Liz. Yeah, he'd be like, no problem. Quantum event, here we go. Boom, because I'm Stephen Hawking and I'm magical. Yep. <laughs> no. Like a unicorn. Like a unicorn. <laughs> There's so many unicorns out there, guys. Hey, you're not extinct. You? I have the unicorn theory, too, that there, there are, they do exist. They're just real hard to find. <laughs> the unicorn is very hard to find. Mm-hmm. Like that one unicorn. Thing. That one unicorn. Yep. Too true. Do we have any more jams? Um, I'll ask one more. Um, <laughs> if you could reboot any canceled series, which one would you pick? Oh my gosh. Well, half of them are getting rebooted now. <laughs> 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 like, everything's getting second life, so I I guess fire. Which... Because it's not, it's like the only one that isn't, you know? Firefly. I feel like everyone is going to answer that. Uh, too soon. Like, it is too soon. I know. Like, I love Buffy, but I feel like I love the ending of Buffy so much that I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to ruin that, especially, and they have the comics, uh, the seasons in comics, which are so well done, so I wouldn't want to, like, I worry about reboots because I, I don't want to ruin what's out there. Like, I love mm-hmm. what X-Files is doing because I feel like they're doing X-Files just now. They're not changing it. They're not trying to rewrite history. They're just doing X-Files, which is awesome. Um, 24 is getting new life. Like, um, Arrested Development got more seasons. That's one that is one of my favorites. Like, I love Arrested Development. So when they brought that back, I was like, yes! Um... There's a show, oh, well, okay, there's a show called The Vicar of Dibley with Don French and Richard Armitage is in it, and, <gasps> yeah, and um, the, the guy that plays Barty Crouch, not David Tennant, who's Barty Crouch Jr., but Barty Crouch, he plays Owen the farm, farmhand who's, like, in love with his sheep or whatever, and um, it's basically about this lady vicar who comes to the town and, like, shakes things up. And they, but they ended it well, so I don't know, but I just would love more episodes of that show because I, that's my go-to, like, my go-to shows at night when I don't have anything I'm watching are Seinfeld, Arrested Development, and The Vicar of Dibley. Like, those are my three shows. Oh, and The IT Crowd. I love love The IT Crowd. Oh my gosh, I love that show. So, so there's, that's a tough one because I feel like a lot of the shows that I love, oh, never mind, they just remembered. (gasps) Dark Angel with with um, um, Jessica oh Alba. Jessica Alba. Alba. I loved oh that God. show. This that show is, is like the heartbreak of my life mm-hmm. because it got canceled after season two, and Logan and Max couldn't even touch because because Logan had a disease where he couldn't touch Max, and then they never got together. And like, what's it going to do? It was the worst. So I was I would die if that show came back. I would like cry. <laughs> like my childhood. Um, so Firefly and Dark Angel. Weird. <laughs> Not Firefly but Dark Angel. That's the one. Awesome. I can't ever just say like one answer can I have to do like a twenty minute solo <laughs> That's how <laughs> That's how we That's always how we are. That's how we get to know you. That's exactly yes. how we get to know you. Good, I'm glad. You know, you know. Hardly anyone can just give, like, a one answer. In fact, the whole story, the whole history behind our questionnaire was it was initially con- supposed to be a rapid-fire questionnaire, and it was never... No one could answer it. <laughs> that would never work for me. <laughs> I know. Like, there's 17 reasons why I really like that show, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so we, like, yeah, we started to come up with different names for it. And initially, um, Rachel came up with the nerdity quotient, but then somebody made fun of that, saying that it was way too brainy. <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure what we're gonna call it. It may just be questionnaire. <laughs> <laughs> like the questionnaire. 
Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. We just need music for it. I feel yeah. like if there's music, then we don't have to really name it anything. Say it like a little sexy, like the question. <laughs> Ooh. I like. Now, Did you have to put that little part out and just insert it every time? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. The question. Now, Jeff, yeah. Just put it into like a button where you just press it and then it'll just play that. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Boom. No, I mean we we call the the podcast the non podcast podcast because one, it's still not on iTunes yet, and I'm still in the transition phase. Yeah. And I'm trying to find someone to do music for it. So I figured once we actually have like an official theme song and it's on iTunes, it'll officially be the podcast. Well, there you go. But you but, should call it the non-podcast podcast, because it's sort of cute to do it. We may stick with it, just because we've been doing it for so long and it's still the non-podcast. <laughs> for a while, I didn't know whether we were the non-podcast podcast or we were the podcast, comma, non-podcast. Like, yeah. in my brain, it was different. <laughs> <laughs> Your podcast, not- I think I'm over- yes. I think I'm overthinking this a little bit, but I know yeah, think you are. It's okay. <laughs> well, so it's like totally cool. It's because they're um, different. Liz, yeah. we're we're definitely gonna have to have you on again because you're amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This was so fun. I love non-podcast podcast podcasts. They're like normal podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Non-podcast yeah. podcast. Oh yeah. And. uh I know uh, at least Rachel and I are going to continue stalking you, and I'm pretty sure Jamie and Jen will probably start stalking you later. Oh, <laughs> Indeed. I've been trying to stalk you since we started <laughs> on Instagram. That's why I was, like, scrolling here. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> And then I came across the Hamilton Grammy wave, and then it kind of stopped from there. Then it's like, a, it's like a rabbit hole. It's like an Instagram rabbit hole. Yeah. So... But um, thank you so much for coming on and taking the time to talk to us. And we will pimp out all of the Nerd in the City stuff so everyone can find you and all of the different social medias and everybody needs to stalk. It's just like we're stalking. But not in the creepy way. Yeah. But, yeah. Not in the creepy way, just in like the nerd love sort of way. <laughs> yeah, stalking if we're friends, you know? <laughs> now we're friends. Yes. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, so hopefully hopefully we'll get a chance to like actually hang out in person at some point. If not at HQ, maybe I don't know. Maybe in Disney. Maybe yeah. So come stay with me. Hello, I've got couches. Josh Josh came and stayed with oh, me. Yes. Yay! Yeah. That'd be amazing. But but yeah, no, we'll definitely be in touch. And we'll let you know when this will post because it'll what when is that, Jams? Will that be next week? Yes. Okay, so yeah, it'll be for next week on Wednesday. Send me all the links so I can put it out and push it too. Okay, yes. Um, I will also, um, if you would like to send me like three or four photos that you'd like me to share with the post, I can do that. And um, anything that you would like to pimp out. So, I love to pimp things out. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. That sounded bad. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just to clarify, I'm not a pimp. <laughs> I'm a normal girl that doesn't have pimp. <laughs> if you really want to know, Liz, watch So This Happened. <laughs> I'm going to binge That's through true. that. Yeah, I'm going to binge through that too. I always say that my Spotify and my Pinterest are the two best ways to know me, but the third way would be my um my my show. Because yeah. my Pinterest is literally my brain on the internet. Like it's like th three hundred and like ninety hundred billion boards of every little thing that, every corner of my brain is like a board on there. So that's like that's like I invented Pinterest long before I knew that what it was. <laughs> <laughs> but in my head and it lived there. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to ask you one other question. Oh, okay. How do you make time to manage everything that you're doing? Because you're doing a lot. Oh, man. Um, well, sometimes it is more it is more difficult, especially because now I have two jobs that I do. I'm, I'm social, manager, uh, social media manager at my church, 
and I'm also a social media manager for my uncle's online company. So I do both of those. Um, and then I also do all my own stuff. But I, um, I'm very intentional about carving out um, time that's dedicated only to me and my uh, personal brand and my and, and my projects. Um, some days it's harder than others, but a lot of times, I, well, actually, you know what? I do a lot of the stuff on my phone, which helps my life immensely. I write blog posts on my phone because I have the WordPress app. So um, a lot of it happens that way. And a lot of forward thinking, like I make a thousand lists before something actually happens, um, especially something like the carols or my show or something like that. You know, it takes a lot of time to build up. But um, I don't even know. Just <laughs> most dedication and lack of sleep, probably. I like I'll wait. Some days I will work till like four in the morning just because I get like a good writing jack going, and then I'm like, who cares? Who needs sleep? I'm in the middle of writing. It's fine. And other days I'm like, I can't even think about pencil. I'm so tired. So it's like, you know, I don't know. It's when the inspiration comes, I try to get as much out of myself as I can. That way, I sort of store up things for the future. Um, future blog posts if I'm not feeling inspired or, you know, I have like 89 drafts waiting to be realized like in my WordPress queue. So stuff like that is just trying to, um, trying to carve out time away from other, like uh, that isn't dedicated to other people because I spend a lot of time giving my to other people. So I have to be very intentional about that. Um, you know, with, with Instagram pictures, cause a lot of my family or friends don't get it. So, um, if you tell someone I can't do that, I need to take an Instagram picture. They're literally like, "You're easy." <laughs> That's stupid. And and in their minds, I can see why it would be, unless you're trying to build a personal brand, which is sort of a new animal that they don't really understand. Um, mm -hmm. So I have to sort of say, "That's cool that you don't get it. I'm still going to do whatever I want." So enjoy life like whatever and I think that's part of the New Yorker in like having lived in New York for eight years that I realized um, the importance of my time and that it's my thing to give to whoever and whatever I want to give it to and if I'm giving it to someone it's valuable and if someone takes advantage of it it's it's not okay and so I have learned to say it takes a long time and there are some people who fly through the cracks that get a lot of um leeway that shouldn't have it you know right. so that's tough to to balance especially with the boy perspective you know sometimes boys can crawl in there and get more time than they should yeah. and that's a tough one for me because boys are but you know so um that's uh, i guess that's that's i don't even know how i do it but that's probably the closest thing i can say yeah i, I know that's, that's a good way of putting it and i think that, that kind of touches on to of like what I was trying to not so eloquently say <laughs> we started talking about the so this happened because I don't know if it necessarily has to do with specifically New York but I think that also has a lot to do with being in your 30s and just kind of like figuring out like what it is that's important to you and how you want to spend your time and all of that and you know goes hand in hand with the compromising and how much you want to compromise and who with and all that jazz. Yeah, but I think you're right. It is more. It, it's an age thing too. The thing that the thing that I think New York gave me that other places might not give as much is is the freedom to say I don't need to follow convention. I don't need to be married in my 30s. Right. I'm in New York. I'm doing something with my life. Whereas if you're home, like in your hometown in your 30s, and that's not always the case. That's not the real case. It doesn't matter where you are in your 30s. If you're not married, it's okay. But I think that sometimes the perception is, what are you doing with your life? You're not right. in Which is Especially in the South. Oh, especially in the South. Hello. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, you know, growing up in Florida. Florida is the South, too. I mean, it, it may be Florida, but it's, it's as Southern-minded as other Southern states, sometimes more so. Um, so I think that... Prior to moving to New York, I didn't realize that that was okay. I didn't, I just, you know, everyone gets married when they're in their 20s. Like everyone right. gets married by 25, and then they have babies, and then they buy a house, and then they have a retirement plan, and then they are dead. Like, that's what they do. Like, that's what your life is. 
It is. Like, that's that's such a harsh way of putting it, but that's, like, the mentality and coming out of our parents' generation and our grandparents' the, the Depression era. That's sort of, to get, we're all serious all of a sudden, but um, that's sort of the mindset. And, of course, that's passed down from generation to generation and made more, more solidified in certain situations until you realize, oh, no, I'm, like, a free-thinking, independent person who can do whatever the hell I want to, and I will. Right. And so I think New York gave me that freedom, whereas if I had stayed in Florida, I'd, I think I would probably be married. And that would have been fine, because as a, I'm a believer, so I think God can make anything happen with whatever you give him. He can make good things happen. But there are better things sometimes, right. if you are willing to, like, follow. So that's, uh, that's my little, like, serious moment for you. <laughs> Well, thank you again, my dear, and you are inspiring, and your energy is just infectious. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah you, I, I just love you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. That's so sweet, you guys. I love it. I, I love to, like, talk to people who get it, and it's hard to find that, and so I'm glad that, like, you know, like, Nerd HQ brings us all together. Yeah. That's so cool. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Thank you, Zachary Levi. Yeah. 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 He's awesome. That's pretty cool. Thanks again, hon. And we'll, we'll be in touch, and um, I'll send you that link about the president as soon as we get off of here. <laughs> <laughs> I will try to figure out where my quiz went so you can take it. Although yes. I all have an idea of who you are now. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> quiz. <laughs> I still kind of want to take it. I'll still take the quiz. Question. It's a little quiz. It's just a little one. Awesome. The book will have a more like a, like a write-in section or something. I don't know. Like mail it in and I'll give you a personal assessment. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and anytime, you just let me know. This is so fun. I love it. Okay, awesome. Yes, we will have you on at some point. Bye. Thank you so much. Thanks, Liz. Bye, Liz. Thank you.